Now, I still saw in my dream that they went on until they were come to the place that simple and sloth and presumption lay and slept in. When Christian went by on pilgrimage, and behold, they were hanged up in irons a little way off on the other side. Mercy. Then said Mercy to him that was their guide and conductor, What are these three men, and for what are they hanged here? Great heart. These three men were men of bad qualities. They had no mind to be pilgrims themselves, and whomsoever they could they hindered. They were for sloth and folly themselves, and whomsoever they could persuade, they made so too, and withal taught them to presume that they should do well at last. They were asleep when Christian went by, and now you go by, they are hanged. Mercy. But could they persuade any one to be of their opinion? Great heart. Yes, they turned several out of the way. There was slow pace that they persuaded to do as they. They also prevailed with one short wind, with one no heart, with one linger after lust, and with one sleepy head, and with a young woman, her name was dull, to turn out of the way and become as they. Besides, they brought up an ill report of your Lord, persuading others that he was a hard taskmaster. They also brought up an evil report of the good land, saying it was not half so good as some pretended it was. They also began to vilify his servants and to count the best of them meddlesome, troublesome, busybodies, Father, they would call the bread of God husks, the comforts of his children fancies, the travel and labor of pilgrims things to no purpose. Christiana. Nay, said Christiana, if they were such, they should never be bewailed by me. They have but what they deserve, and I think it well that they stand so near the highway that others may see and take warning. But had it not been well if their crimes had been engraven on some pillar of iron or brass and left here where they did their mischiefs for, for caution to other bad men. Great heart. So it is. You may well perceive if you will go a little to the wall. Mercy. No, no, let them hang, and their names rot, and their crimes live forever against them. I think it is a high favor that they are hanged before we came hither. Who knows else what they might have done to such poor women as we? Then she turned it into a song, saying, Now then you three hang here, and be a sign to all that shall against the truth combine. And let him that comes after fear this end, if unto pilgrims he is not a friend. And thou, my soul, of all such men beware, that unto holiness opposers are. Thus they went on, till they came at the foot of the hill, Difficulty, where again their good friend Mr. Greatheart took an occasion to tell them what happened when their when Christian himself went by. So he had them first to the spring. Lo, saith he, this is the spring that Christian drank of before he went up this hill. Then it was clear and good, but now it is dirty with the feet of some that are not desirous that pilgrims here should quench their thirst. Thereat mercy said, And why so envious trow? But, said the guide, it will do, if taken up and put into a vessel that is sweet and good, for then the dirt will sink to the bottom, and the water come out by itself more clear. Thus, therefore, Christiana and her companions were compelled to do. They took it up and put it into an earthen pot, and so let it stand till the dirt was gone to the bottom, and then drank thereof. 
Next he showed them the two byways that were at the foot of the hill, where formality and hypocrisy lost themselves. And said he, These are dangerous paths. Two were here cast away when Christian came by. And although you see these ways are since stopped up with chains, posts, and a ditch, yet there are them that will choose to adventure here, rather than take the pains to go up this hill. Christiana. The way of transgression is hard. Proverbs 13.15 It is a wonder that they can get into those ways without danger of breaking their necks. Great heart. They will venture, yea, if at any time any of the king's servants do happen to see them, and do call upon them, and tell them that they are in the wrong way, and do bid them beware of the danger, then they will railingly return them much. But I never saw it before. But here, let us beware of sleeping. For as I have heard, for that it costs poor Christian dear. Then said Mr. Greatheart to the little ones, Come, my pretty boys, how do you do? What think you now of going on pilgrimage? Sir, said the least, I was almost beat out of heart, but I thank you for lending me a hand at my need. And I remember now what my mother had told me, namely that the way to heaven is as a ladder, and the way to hell is as down a hill. But I'd rather go up the ladder to life than down the hill to death. Then said Mercy, But the proverb is, To go down the hill is easy. But James said, For that was his name, The day is coming when, in my opinion, going down the hill will be the hardest of all. It is a good boy, said his master. Thou hast given her a right answer. Then Mercy smiled, but the little boy did blush. Come, said Christiana, will you eat a bit to sweeten your mouths while you sit here to rest your legs? For I have here a piece of pomegranate, which Mr. Interpreter put into my hand just when I came out of his doors. He gave me also a piece of honeycomb and a little bottle of spirits. I thought he gave you something, said Mercy, because he called you aside. Yes, so he did, said the other. But, said Christiana, it shall be still as I said it. Should, when at first we came from home, thou shalt be a sharer in all the good that I have, because thou so willingly didst become my companion. Then she gave to them, and they did eat, both Mercy and the boys. And said Christiana to Mr. Greatheart, Sir, will you do as we? But he answered, You are going on pilgrimage, and presently I shall return. Much good may what you have do to you. At home I eat the same every day. Now when they had eaten and drank and had chatted a little longer, their guide said to them, The day wears away. If you think good, let us prepare to be going. So they got up to go, and the little boys went before. But Christiana forgot to take her bottle of spirits with her. So she, <coughs> so she sent her little boy back to fetch it. Then said Mercy, I think that this is a losing place. Here Christian lost his role, and here Christiana left her bottle behind her. Sir, what is the cause of this? So their guide made answer, and said the cause is sleep or forgetfulness. Some sleep when they should keep awake, and some forget when they should remember. That this is the very cause. Why often at the resting places, some pilgrims in some things come to losers. Come off losers. Pilgrims should watch and remember what they have already received under their greatest enjoyments. But for want of doing so, oftentimes their rejoicing ends in tears, and their sunshine in a cloud. Witness the story of Christian at this place. When they were come to the place where mistrust and timorous met Christian, 
to persuade him to go back for fear of the lions. They perceived, as it were, a stage, and before it, towards the road, a broad plate, with a copy of verses written thereon, and underneath the reason of raising up of that stage, in that place rendered. The verses were these. Let him that sees his stage take heed unto his heart and tongue, lest it he lest if he do not hear be speed as some have long gone let me read that again let him that sees the stage take heed unto his heart and tongue lest if he do not hear be speed as some have long gone the words underneath the verses were this stage was built to punish such upon who, through timorousness and mistrust, shall be afraid to go farther on pilgrimage. Also on this stage both mistrust and timorous were burnt through the tongue with a hot iron for endeavoring to hinder Christian on his journey. Then said Mercy, This is much like to the saying of the Beloved, Uh, what is that? Psalm 120, verses 3 and 4. We shall be given unto thee, or what shall be up? Uh, what shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. So they went on till they came within sight of the lions. Now Mr. Greatheart was a strong man, so he was not afraid of the lion. But yet, when they were come up to the place where the lions were, the boys that went before were glad to cringe behind, for they were afraid of the lions. So they stepped back and went behind. At this their guide smiled and said, How now, my boys, do you love to go before when no danger doth approach, and love to come behind so soon as the lions appear. Now as they went on, Mr. Greatheart drew his sword with intent to make a way for the pilgrims in spite of the lions. Then there appeared one that it seems had taken upon him to back the lions. And he said to the pilgrim's guide, What is the cause of your coming hither? Now the name of that man was Grim, or Bloody Man, because of his saying of pilgrims, and he was of the race of the giants. Great heart. Then said the pilgrim's guide, These women and children are going on pilgrimage, and this is the way they must go, and go it they shall, in spite of thee and thy lions. Grim. This is not their way, neither shall they go therein. I am come forth to withstand them, and to that end will back the lions. Now, to say the truth, by reason of the fierceness of the lions, and of the grim carriage of him that did back them, this way had of late lain much unoccupied, and was almost all grown over with grass. Then said Christiana, Though the highways have been unoccupied heretofore, and though the travelers have been made in times past to walk through bypaths, it must not be so now I am ri for now, so now I am risen. Now I am risen a mother in Israel, Judges five, six and seven. Grim. Then he swore by the lions. But it should and therefore bid them turn aside, for they should not have passage there. Great heart. But their guide made first his approach unto Grim and laid so heavily at him with his sword that he forced him to retreat. Grim then said he, that attempted to back the lions, Will you slay me upon my own ground? Greatheart, it is the king's highway that we are in, and in this way it is that thou hast placed the lions. But these women and these children though weak, shall hold on their way in spite of thy lions. 
and with that he gave him again a downright blow, and brought him upon his knees, and with this blow he also broke his helmet, and with the next cut off an arm. Then did the giant roar, so hideously that his voice frightened the women, and yet they were glad to see him lie sprawling upon the ground. Now the lions were chained, and so of themselves could do nothing. Wherefore, when old Grimm, that intended to back them, was dead, Mr. Greatheart said to the pilgrims, Come now, and follow me, and no hurt shall happen to you from the lions. They therefore went on, but the woman trembled as they passed by them. The boys also looked as, they, as if they would die, but they all got by without further hurt. Now when they were within sight of the porter's lodge, and they soon came up unto it, but they made the more haste after this to go thither, because it is dangerous traveling there in the night. So when they were come to the gate, the guide knocked, and the porter cried, Who is there? But as soon as the guide had said, It is I, he knew his voice and came down, for the guide had oft before that come thither as a conductor of pilgrims. When he was come down, he opened the gate, and seeing the guide standing just before it, for he saw not the woman, for they were behind him, he said unto him, How now, Mr. Greatheart, what is your business here so late at night? I have brought, said he, some pilgrims hither, where by my Lord's commandment, they must lodge. I had been here some time ago, had I not been opposed by the giant that used to back the lions. But I, after a long and tedious combat with him, have cut him off, and have brought the pilgrims hither in safety. Port, will you not go in and stay till the morning? Great heart, no, I will return to my lord tonight. Christiana, Oh, sir, I know not how to be willing. You should leave us in our pilgrimage. You have been so faithful and so loving to us. You have fought so stoutly for us. You have been so hardy in counseling us that I shall never forget your favor towards us. Then said Mercy, Oh, that we might have the company, have thy company to our journey's end. How can such poor women as we hold out in a way so full of troubles as this way is? Without a friend and defender, James. Then said James, the youngest of the boys, Pray, sir, be persuaded to go with us and help us, because we are so weak and the way so dangerous as it is. Great heart. I am at my Lord's commandment, if he shall allot me to be your guide quite through. I will willingly wait upon you. But here you failed at first, <coughs> for when he bid me come thus far with you, then you should have begged me of him to have good gone quite through with you. And he would have granted your request. However, at present I must withdraw. And so, good Christiana, mercy, and my brave children, adieu. Then said Porter, Mr. Watchful, ask Christiana of her country and of her kindred. And she said, I come from the city of destruction. I am a widow woman, and my husband is dead. His name is Christian the Pilgrim. How, said he, she, Porter, was he your husband? Ah, how saith the Porter, was he your husband? Yes, said she, and these are his children, and this, pointing to mercy, is one of my town's women. Then the Porter rang his bell, as at such times he is wont, and there came to the door one of the damsels, whose name was Humble Mind, and to her the Porter said, Go tell it within that Christiana, 